Hey Floss Tube. Um, I decided to do some of these tags because there's like a zillion of them floating around and I've been watching some of them so I'm like, let me get on here and do a few of these. Um, when I was going back through all the videos looking for the questions, every time I would come across one, I was like, oh, there's another tag, there's another tag. Um, so, in the interest of this video not being three hours long, I'm going to limit it to four. So I'm going to do Garrett's tag and Teresa Little Stitcher's tag and the Chaotic tag by MN Chaos and the Joy of Cross Stitching tag by uh, Sonia at Cat Crazy Creations. So uh, I'm going to start with Garrett's tag and I have the... Where's my window? Oh, here. Um... I have the, sorry, um, I have the questions here, so that's what I'm looking at. So, Coffee Stitcher Garrett's tag, what is one designer you didn't initially have any interest in until you actually did one? Um, I think that the answer to that question is I haven't discovered that designer yet. I have a couple of suspicions on who it might be. Um, I don't stitch stuff that I don't like, so... If I'm stitching it, it's probably because I was interested in it because I liked it. I don't, I don't stitch stuff that I don't like. But there's a couple designers that I haven't stitched anything of theirs because, for whatever reason, um, and I suspect if I were to pick up one of those, I would, you know, that would be the answer to the question. Um, and some of those answers are going to be the answer to this next question. What is one designer that you just can't get in the groove on? And I suspect that some of these would end up being the answer to the first question. Um, <laughs> and some of these I know are very, very popular. But uh, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, just not feeling it. Some of their stuff is really cute. Jessie just finished her Fibery Friends sampler, and it's really cute. The, uh, the Storytime sampler, the Once Upon a Time samplers, they're really cute. But it's just, it's not something that I see myself stitching. Um, uh, Clouds Factory, just, yeah, not feeling the little people thing. Um, um, just Nan. I don't really have anything against Just Nan. I have a couple of her designs, but my gripe about her is that all of her designs look the same. They've all got the same color palette. They've all got the same style of flowers. I don't know. They just all look the same to me. Um, if you look at Mirabilia, if you look at Teresa Winsler, if you look at Ink Circles or Rosewood Manor, all of their designs look different from each other. They're the same style, but they all look different. Like, just Nan, all her designs look the same to me. I just, I don't know. Um... What is one chart that you would love to see made, and who would you like to see design it? Um, I do have a wish list for a chart that I can't find. I want a chart, or a set of charts. There's a specific series of Bible verses about uh, Jerusalem, and a, just like Jewish, uh, Jerusalem, Israel inspired charts that uh, I'd like to see and I have two votes for who would design it. The first one would be something in the style of the Sweetheart Tree. Maybe Sandy at the Sweetheart Tree or uh, Thea Duick at the Victoria Sampler or something along that line like a band sampler kind of thing. Um, and my second choice for who would design that would be me. Um, I have some thoughts about that and I think I actually had a sketch of it at one point I had sketched it out on paper I don't know what happened to it I can't find it I would have to start over but one of these days that's something that I would like to do um, Teresa's tag um, do seasons affect your stitching pattern or do you stitch less in the summer um, yeah you know I think they kind of do I do stitch less in the summer um, it's hot. There's just a lot going on in the summer. I tend to be a little less 
active in the summer just because it's hot um and there's more stuff to do outside more places to go and yeah i do think i kind of stitch less in the summer um and as odd as it sounds i tend to stitch less on vacation like when i'm looking forward to vacation and usually i do staycations i don't this year i went to new york but usually i stay home um i think oh all the stitching time and i very rarely do any stitching on vacation um it seems like the more busy i get the more stressed i get the more i tend to stitch like i make time to stitch um do you prefer the stitching with a lap, st a lap stand on a floor stand or in hand. I stitch in hand almost always. Um, I don't use a stand. I have some concerns about floor stands, um, but I can see the benefit of them. I could see why they would be useful, and maybe one of these days I'll try it. Um, do you prefer stitching with a hoop, a Q-snap, a frame, or in hand? I stitch in hand. Um, usually the only time where I'll use a frame is, uh, like a Q-snap kind of frame is if I'm parking, like on a Teresa Winsler or on a Hade. Um, it's difficult to park more than a few colors if you're stitching in hand. Do you use a stitching light or no additional lighting? If yes, do you use a floor light or a clip-on light? I do use a stitching light. I have an alt light. Um, I have a floor stand, a floor lamp. And it is over here next to my couch by my stitching spot. And yeah, I use that a lot. I have a, I also have an all light, like a desk lamp. I rarely use that. I can't get it positioned right. And, um, and yeah, I just rarely use that, at least for stitching. I've used it for some other things if I need more light. Oh, my gripe about the alt light is that it, they both put out a lot of heat. It gets really hot to sit under them. The uh, floor lamp, I recently replaced the bulb. And the new bulbs seem to be better. They seem to generate less heat. But the table lamp has a lot of, has an old bulb in it. And it puts out a lot of heat. It gets, it gets too hot to sit under that too long. Do you use a magnifier? No. Do you stitch one-handed, two-handed, or both? I stitch uh, one-handed because I stitch in hand, so I have to use one hand to hold my fabric. And uh, I stitch with the other hand. Oops. Do you prefer to stitch alone or in a quiet place or around family and in the living area? Well, I live by myself, so I stitch alone most of the time. Um... It generally works out better that way, frankly, because if I were stitching with a bunch of people, I'd never get anything done. I'd be busy talking and paying attention to the conversation. Um, what is your preferred fabric and preferred count of that fabric? I like Lugana and Cushel and um, I use 28 a lot. I like 28. I will use 32. Um... But those are the two that I use the most, 28 and 32. Um, what is, I did that one already. Is your time, in your time stitching, have you ever lost your stitchy bug? If so, how many times have you lost it and how did you get it back? Yes, I lose my stitchy bug all the time. Um, for, I lost my stitchy bug for about two thirds of 2014. Um, I've been in a little bit of a slump this summer, um, earlier this summer, like, be for, like, a month between the time I finished Strawberry Fields and my birthday in July, um, I wasn't stitching, yeah, I lose my stitchy bug a lot, and I don't know how to get it back, um, it usually eventually comes back on its own, sometimes shopping helps, sometimes starting a new project helps, um, yeah, I don't know how to get it back. There was a period during 2008 and 2009 that I hardly stitched at all. Um, yeah, I don't know how to get it back. Sometimes I just do other things for a while and eventually I'll pick it up again. I don't, 
I don't worry about it too much. I see people, oh, I haven't stitched in three months. Maybe I should sell my stash. No, I don't, I don't do that. I know I've been doing this long enough that I know. Eventually I'll go back to it. I don't stress about it. Um, let's see. Do you travel and stitch? Would you, or do you stitch on public transport or is it a home hobby only? I take my stitching all over. Um, I have stitched on the bus in the past, the public transportation. I don't do it too much because it, it tends to make me feel a little bit nauseous. I don't, I don't do it too much, but I have in the past been able to do a little bit of back stitching or if there was a project that I was just obsessed with, sometimes I would do that. And if I had a long bus ride, I used to take the bus, it would take me about an hour to get to work. Um, which lends itself better on one bus lends itself better to stitching than right now I have a 15 minute bus ride and in the past I've had you know it's taken me an hour to get to work but it was segmented into like four 15 minute trips which doesn't really lend itself to stitching very well um, but I stitch at work um, on the weekends I'll often go to Starbucks or go to the coffee bean and get breakfast and I'll take my stitching and I'll sit in there for an hour or so and stitch um yeah I stitch in public quite a bit um and I stitch at home of course so that was uh Teresa's tag the joy of cross stitch tag by Sonia at Cat Z Creations how did you learn to stitch um I taught myself I had some stamped cross stitch kits when I was a kid. Um, I've shown one of them on here, the Have a Happy Day one I think I showed. Um, and I did, I did those when I was, I think I was eight, nine, ten. And I had heard about Counted. And when I was about twelve I decided I wanted to do Count, I wanted to try Counted. So. My mom took me, there was a fabric store that carried a small selection of, of cross stitch supplies and I bought a beginner's book. It had several, you know, little designs in it. It had a, uni or a carousel horse and a clown and just some really little designs and it had instructions and I got a tube of Charles Craft Ada and some needles and uh, some floss and I just learned out of the book. Um, and I remember <laughs> when I did that, the first design I did was a carousel horse. And I remember understanding the instructions to say you had to go row by row. So, like, I started at the top of the carousel horse at the top of the pole. And then, you know, I did the first row and I would, like, change colors every, you know, every time the row changed colors. And I worked my way down. And not too long after that, I went to, there was a, there used to be a needle workshop here. And I overheard the clerk talking to another customer about going section by section, color by color. And I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. So, yeah, I, uh, I taught myself. Have you ever taught anyone how to stitch? Yes, I did. I taught a couple of my friends in high school. Um, the Joanne Fabric here gives classes on various things and one one of those seasons I had offered to teach a class on stitching it didn't really do very well I only had one lady show up but you know I talked to her and I showed her what to do and that was cool um, and I had taught a co-worker very briefly I had given her a kit and I had a little they have those like one dollar ornament kits in Walmart I had given her a kit and um, I had shown her very briefly. I don't know if, and I know she had started it, she had showed it to me. I don't know if she ever finished it, and I know she passed away not too long after that. So, I'm not sure how far she got with that. Um, and actually, last semester I had a classmate that I bought. I also bought one of those $1, or a couple of those $1 uh, stitching kits from Walmart for. And I know she finished one of them, and... She was working on the second one. I don't know if she's finished the second one, but she seemed to be enjoying it. So, yeah. It's always fun to teach people to stitch and add to our hobby here. Um, 
when you stitch, do you like to watch TV, listen to music, or just have quiet? A little of all of those. Most often I listen to music or I watch floss tube. Um, sometimes I watch TV if there's something on or I find something to watch. Um, at work, it's usually quiet um, because people have gone to lunch. So uh, it's usually pretty quiet at work. Sometimes at home I'll stitch in quiet, but not. Not very often. I usually at least have music on. Um, when you use a kit, which company or companies do you like the best? Um, Dimensions puts out nice kits, especially Dimensions Gold. Janlin, um, their kits have improved. Um, and, uh, and, you know, for the audience that they're targeting and for the price point that they're at, you know, they have, they have really nice kids. Um, when you get into like the, the, uh, I don't know what to call them, but like the more, I don't know what to call them. I guess the more specialized kids and the less I think of Dimensions and Janlin as kind of mass market kits that you find in Michaels and Hobby Lobby and well good luck finding them in Michaels but um and Joanne um but when you get into some of the like specialty kits like Shepherd's Bush, Lenart, uh, the Victoria Sampler actually I don't know if Victoria Sampler puts out kids. I know she puts out accessory packs. I might be wrong about the kids. Um, let's see. Shepherd's Bush, Lenart, um, Thea Governor. Um, some of those, the higher end kids, are beautiful kids. They come with silks, Chatelaine, the kids that European Cross Stitch sells for Chatelaine. Um, they come with silks and they come with the fabric surge and they come pre-sorted and they're just wonderful. They come with plenty of thread and they're just, um, wonderful kits. The instructions are clear and, but there are also some really poor kids out there. Um, but, um, yeah, I like, um. Yeah, I tend to like the more specialized kits. Although, I have plenty of the Dimensions kits. I don't have anything against Dimensions. Um, but, the higher-end kits. Yeah. Beautiful kits. Um, what are your favorite designs to stitch? I have a little bit of everything. I have fantasy, I have Bible verses, I have samplers, I have, I have a little bit of everything. Um, my favorite designs to stitch, I don't know, I like them all. I guess, I guess I like the little ones that can be completed quickly because I have the attention span of a gnat, um, so I like ones that can be completed quickly. Otherwise, they tend to sit around for five years or ten years until I get enough, you know, attention to finish them. Um, how do you get? ideas or inspiration for your projects um floss tube facebook the yuku boards those have gotten very very slow but they used to be there used to be a lot of enabling on those boards um but now it's mostly floss tube and facebook um or my stash i'll go through my stash especially if i'm looking to fill a particular hole in my in my rotation or meet a particular need um, I'll 
go through my stash to find something that fits that criteria that I have. How do you store or keep your charts? I have a large um, armoire that I bought. It was intended to store your clothes. It's intended to be in your bedroom. I have it in my living room. And it has... I love it. Um, when you open it, on the left, it has... Well, it has a hanging rod on the top. And then it has an adjustable shelf that you can leave in there or you can take out to be able to use the hanging space. And I have my charts on one shelf and I have my kits on the other shelf. Um, no, that's wrong. I have my kits and my charts on the bottom shelf. And on the adjustable shelf, I have my whips. That's what it is. Um, and then on the side and then the bottom, it has some drawers. And I have my fabric and my uh, other accessories, my scissors and some other crafts that I was dabbling in, jewelry and knitting and stored in the other drawers. Um, it has a little shelf on the right where I keep my box with my f my uh, floss and my finished projects and my beads. Um, I love it. And it has closed doors so I can uh, close the doors and keep the mess hidden. Um, among the best things that I've ever bought my for, for myself, I love it. Let's see. Do you stitch for yourself or to give to others? These days I mostly stitch for myself. Sometimes I'll, I'll pick up something small to give to someone else. In fact, right now I'm in the market for a, a gift for a coworker. I bought something that I think is going to work. Um, but if I see something better... Yeah, I sort of have my eye out for something better. But... Um, I used to give a lot of gifts. I used to do a lot of wedding gifts and a lot of baby gifts. I think all my friends have gotten gifts at some point or another. Some of them were more appreciative than others. Um, but these days, most of what I stitch, I keep. When you take your cross stitch projects in the car to appointments or traveling, how do you carry all your supplies? I either use the bag that the kit came in, if it's a very small kit, I'll just um, cut the top of the bag when I open it and I'll use that, or I'll use a um, Ziploc bag. And if I'm taking my stitching out and about, like to an appointment or something, um, I try to use a small project and something that I can fit in my purse. Um, sometimes I choose my purse based on what I need to fit inside it, but I'll try to pick something that'll fit in my purse. What do you enjoy most about stitching? Um, you know, I think I enjoy seeing the picture come alive, starting with blank fabric and blank threads and having a having a product at the end of it that didn't exist before. Um, I think that's that's what I enjoy the most in finishing. I love to finish projects. I don't do it very, very often. Love it. Um, and, um, yeah, I think that's what I enjoy the most is just making, creating something. So, that is the Joy of Cross Stitch Tag from Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. And... The Chaotic Tag by MN Chaos. Wow, I'm at 24 minutes already. Um, the Chaotic Tag. What is your culture and heritage? Where are your ancestors from? What foods did you grow up eating? Did you grow up with a particular set of beliefs and traditions? Well, my mom's family is mostly from Germany. And they were Roman Catholic. And, um, my dad's family is from Eastern Europe, from Russia and Romania, and they were Jewish. And my, uh, dad's parents and grandparents and his first wife were fairly observant Jews. Um, 
my dad's first wife raised my brothers, you know, in the, you know, as observant Jews that they made their bar mitzvahs and they kept kosher at home and all that kind of stuff. Um, my dad, by the time I came along, my dad wasn't really into that. Um, and my mom raised us as Roman Catholic. Um, I, well, I'll get to that in the next question, I guess. Um, what foods did you grow up eating? I grew up eating American food, hamburgers and hot dogs and a lot of fast food. Um, excuse me. <coughs> but, yeah, we don't really have any ethnic foods. My mom's not Jewish. She doesn't cook Jewish. Um... I know that my brothers have some Jewish recipes that their mother gave them. I don't, I've, you know, I don't have any of those recipes. I've never tried any of those. Um, we grew up Roman Catholic. My mom's kind of a nominal Catholic. If you ask her what religion she is, she'll say that she's Catholic, but she doesn't really go to church. She doesn't. She's not really that involved in it. She goes to church for Christmas and for, like, <coughs> yikes, um, for special occasions, but, um, let's see, but, you know, that's about it. We didn't, we didn't have, like, yeah, no. Um, do you make an effort to pass on the culture you grew up or are you part of any counterculture or are you more of an individualist? Um, well, I don't have children, so I'm not passing on anything. Um, are you part of a, any counterculture? I guess in some ways I would be part of two. Um, I am a practicing Christian and sometimes Christian, you know, Christian, the Christian belief system, the Christian lifestyle isn't always very popular in society and some of the things that, you know, we do as Christians are n not very popular, um, or very, you know, you get made fun of and like, you know, um, and I'm sort of on the fringes, I sort of like it, but I haven't really gotten too much into the kind of crunchy granola, um, lifestyle. There are a lot of things about it that I really like. Um, there are some things about it that I don't. Um, but I'm sort of tiptoeing into some of it. There are some of it that I would probably be more interested in if I was a parent. Um, so there's that. And I'm an individualist. I don't know. Maybe in some ways. I don't know. Um, Is there a social issue cause you were pas passionate about? Um, that's a good question. There are some. Um, I don't know. There's probably some that I would prefer not to discuss here. Um, I'm not, I'm not very active in any of them. There's some that I care a lot about and that I pay attention to, um, but I'm not, I'm not really very active in any of them. Um, and I would sort of prefer not to discuss them here. Um, do you have a favorite style or aesthetic? For example, modern, vintage, fantasy, chic, shabby chic. Um, right now, I really like sort of the, for like my house, and my house doesn't reflect this at all. This is my like wishful thinking house. Um, this is not my lazy Laurel doesn't want to get up and do anything house. 
um, I really like the sort of, you know, natural, clean, kind of, I guess in some ways kind of the zen uh, thing. With, you know, natural materials and not, you know, very clean and uncluttered and uh, for my house. Um, for clothes, I'm kind of picky about clothes. For clothes, I have, you know, I just want it to look good on me and to... Um, I like to be kind of covered. I don't like bra straps showing. I don't like, you know, stuff like that. And I want it to be the same thing, kind of clean and uncluttered. And I, yeah, I don't like those people that wear like 15 layers and I don't, I don't really like that layered look. Um, Do you somehow incorporate any of your four answers above into your choice of patterns you choose to stitch or design? If yes, how do you incorporate them? In some ways, I probably do. Um, the things that I choose, particularly for samplers, uh, are... I like a certain style of sampler. I don't like... I generally don't like spot samplers and things that have too much going on. I don't like too much busy or... Yeah. Um, and this is a hard tag. <laughs> um, and then to some degree, I incorporate it with the subject matter. Like I have Lizzie Green's or Lizzie Kate's. Green Flip It series, which I have yet to start, but um, that's my inspiration piece for my kitchen, which again is Laurel's wishful thinking kitchen, and not Laurel actually has to get up and make her kitchen what she wants it to be. Kitchen. Um, so in some ways I do. In some ways a lot of the, what I stitch, I think, people would find surprising. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, know I go to church and kind of thinking, think of me as like a Bible thumper. But on the other hand, I stitched magic in motion. So in some ways, there's a lot of surprises in what I stitch. Um, if you were to stitch a person, who would it be? Yeah. I, I saw Katie's answer to this, and I agree with her. I'm not a big fan of the pick to pack conversions of people. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't do that. If I want the picture, then I'll scan it and I'll blow it up and I'll frame the picture. I'm I'm not a big fan of that. Um, also, not a big fan of. There's a lot of designs out there of Jesus. Really, not a big fan of those. A lot of designs of Mother Teresa and Princess Diana and all those, yeah, not a big fan. I don't, Queen Elizabeth, yeah, no, I don't, not a big fan of those. The people I stitch are fictional people, mirabilia, fairies, Passion Evercamo, those kinds of things. I don't, yeah, I don't stitch real people. Do you know of a little known designer that you would like to let us know about? I do, actually. She is a stitcher on the Yuku boards, and um, her company is called Tor Ruan Designs. I'll link it below. Uh, her name is Belinda, and um, she has a lot of little designs. She has some Assisi work. She has all kinds of stuff, and I will link to her uh page below. I've, I've fallen a little bit out of uh, out of touch with her so I'm kind of imagine that she has an Etsy shop. I'll try to find it. Um, I'm not really sure what she's been up to these days but 
um, go check her out. What direction do you lay your top cross? Is there a reason for that? I lay my top cross from lower right to upper left. And the reason for that is it just feels more natural to, you know, do my bottom crosses this way and then do my top crosses this way. It just feels more natural that way. And that's the only reason why I do it like that. And did I get to the bottom? Oh. Um, are there any rules or popular methods you don't follow in cross stitch? Why? Um, one of the really popular methods that I don't follow is gridding. Um, I almost never grid. If I do grid, it's because it's going to be particularly helpful for some reason. And I do as little as I can get away with. I hate gridding. It's tedious. It's boring. I don't enjoy doing it. So unless I think it's going to give me some extra amount of help, I don't do it. Um... I probably carry my threads on the back more than is recommended. I try to be careful about, you know, where I'm carrying them. Are they going to show through? I try to kind of hide them under the other stitches. Um, but I probably do that more than I should. And I actually got into trouble with that on the dragonfly just today. Because I carried my thread from the top wing to the bottom wing. And later on I realized that 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 there's a space between the wings and that particular part of the space is not going to be covered. So I had to undo it and fix it so that I wouldn't show later. Um, yeah, are there any other rules? I don't know. I do park on certain pieces. I don't not... Um, yeah, but I don't grid. If someone were to find your FFOs in whip pile in 100 years, when you're long gone, what might they say, think about you? Well, I would hope they say, wow, you know, she did a lot of beautiful work. She was really talented. They might think I'm crazy. Um, I have a lot of stuff. I have more than I could ever possibly stitch, and I'm not really that old. <laughs> but, um, I would, I would, I would like to think that they would enjoy it. And they would think, wow, you know, she, she did a lot of beautiful work. Um, I don't know, they might think that I have too much time on my hands. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so those are the tags. So thank you to Garrett and Teresa Little Stitcher and Sonia and Michaela. And some of those questions were hard. <laughs> but, um... And I can't believe it took me 40 minutes to do that. So, I'll see you next week. I'll see you real soon for my whip update. And I hope you're having a great week and a great stitchy day. And I will see you next time. Bye.